I'm going to talk about how broadcast stations deal with ice and snow on antennas and kind of, you know, how do you go about dealing with that? Do you jump up there with a chisel and chisel off the ice? Probably not if it's a thousand foot tower, but you kind of have a few options. So let's say I mean, we just got through to having a really, really cold snap coming through here. And while it didn't really snow a lot down here, it kind of did up in the mountains. And so that snow and that ice kind of made me think about, you know, I don't think I've ever talked about how broadcasters deal with that. So what you, you kind of have a few options of dealing with snow and ice and mainly the ice is the, is the issue. And that ice will build up on the side of the antenna and basically will start to envelop the antenna. And what'll end up happening is as that ice starts building up and getting thicker, the power that's coming out of the transmitter will end up reflecting off of that and coming back down the line to the transmitter. And the transmitter really does not like having power come back. So how you deal with that is a couple of different ways three ways, but we'll really talk about two and kind of touch on the third. So way number one is you get an antenna heater. So if you were to look up close at an antenna, you'll see that it has, it's basically made of metal and the ice will start to form up on that because it'll get really, really cold. And that RF starts to bounce back down to the transmitter. So you have an option for a heater on the antenna. And this is put on when the antenna's built. Basically, it's built into the antenna. And it's not, it doesn't get hot. It's not gonna burn you. It's not gonna like cook eggs or anything like that. It's just to get the metal warm enough so that way it's above freezing. And that way the ice starts to fall off of it and melt off of it. So it prevents it from building up. Now, there are times when the snow and the ice are just blowing so hard and building up so fast that you can't really melt it fast enough. But the storms will ebb and they'll flow. And as the storms ebb, then you will have that opportunity for that heater to catch up and melt some of that ice off of the antenna. The other way of doing it is doing what's called radomes. And I'm gonna take my little lighter here as an example. And basically this is my metal antenna just putting a cover over it. And that's really all that I'm doing is just covering it up so that way the ice doesn't build up on the antenna itself. Now, there are pluses and minuses, pros and cons for each way. If you're doing the heater, you have to have, well, A, you've got to do it when you put it in, when you install the antenna, that's kind of important. B, you have to have the electrical budget for it it's gonna take a lot of energy. So if you're running it on an off-site grid, like we had at Palomar, we were solar basically. Do you have enough power to run a heating element? Probably not, you may not. So if you have utility power, great. You can probably do that all day long for the most part. But when you start talking about heaters, there is the maintenance aspect of it as well. You have a controller box that's usually on the ground. It has a temperature probe and a sensor for moisture. And as the temperature probe gets down below freezing and the moisture sensor starts sensing moisture on it or water, then it kicks on and starts heating up the antenna. The second way of doing it is using radomes. Radomes are basically a passive system. And so there's no electrical requirements needed for it. It's just basically a plastic cover that goes on over the antenna. There's no opportunity for the radome to melt off the ice and the snow until it starts warming up or the sun comes out and warms up the plastic and then it starts kind of melting off. But it could stay on there, built up for a long time. And if this is in the winter and you're susceptible to a lot of ice like that, then you might have problems for the whole winter. The pluses are, you don't need electrical energy for that. It's just a passive cover that goes on it. Minuses, it never really melts off of the 
the radome. And that's just broadcast antennas at FM frequencies. Let's start talking about microwaves. And microwaves are basically the big drums that you'll see on the side of, of towers. And it's kind of a few pieces. Usually you'll see the, you'll have the reflector bowl, if you will. And then you'll have these little high performance collars that go on it. And then over the front of that is the canvas radome. And it's really basically is a big drum. It really is. If you were to go up there and bang on it, it would go boom, boom, boom. I don't recommend it. Don't do it. But if you did while it was on the ground being built, then yes, that's what it would sound like. We may have done that when we did that that one microwave build a while back. But basically on the microwave dish, you'll have the reflector, and then you have this piece that sticks out of the middle of the reflector. And that piece is the antenna itself. You don't want ice building up on that because at microwave frequencies, the wavelength is a lot smaller and you're going to start having a lot more signal absorption the ice will start absorbing and scattering that RF energy. Instead of it going in the direction you want it to, it's gonna get scattered off in all different directions and absorbed and it's just not gonna be effective. So that's why you would have the radome on the microwave antenna to keep that ice off of it. Ice is not really gonna build up on that canvas uh, cover, if you will. So it keeps the ice off. And the same thing with satellite dishes. A few videos back, I was showing about clearing off the satellite dishes of snow and ice. At those frequencies, your wavelengths are just really, really small. So, really small. So the snow and the ice will absorb it and scatter it. And especially if you're receiving, that satellite is 22,000 miles away over the equator. That is a long way away. So, the amount of signal you have is very little and having ice and snow scatter it and absorb it, not helpful. So again, these are things that you can do. And with uh, satellite dishes, you can get heaters for those as well. Some of them are blankets that go along the back you put on the back end of the, of the uh, reflector. And all it is is just, it's like an electric blanket. It has the sensors as well. The, water and temperature sensor and as it gets cold enough and wet enough it turns that on to melt off any snow and ice now there is another op option for that two of our big six meter dishes have natural gas heaters on them and it's just basically like a barbecue burner on the inside it lights the natural gas heats up the air shoots it into the plenum which is be a space behind the reflector of the dish and just keeps the metal dish nice and warm enough to melt snow and ice. So that's about it. It's, I was thinking about this because of, again, like I said, the cold weather that we just had and the snow that we just had. And I don't think I've really ever talked about it. So there you go. Appreciate you watching this video, appreciating you commenting and questions below. I'll do the best I can. And until next time, stay safe. Oh, oh, whoa, hold on. I need to talk about a safety issue. Speaking of ice and safety, if you are at a tower site, ice is going to eventually fall off of that tower down to the ground. And where are you standing? On the ground. So be aware of falling ice, have a hard hat, have a plan, uh, have safe havens, if you will, that uh, places where you can duck under if there's ice coming down that are sturdy, um, ice bridges, buildings, things like that. Your car is not very safe, especially if you have like a moon roof or a sunroof. That's not going to really do much. That ice is just going to go right through. So being safe with that and the higher the tower, the more dangerous that ice is going to be falling down onto you. At best, it will hurt you. At worst, it will kill you. Uh, I had a supervisor who got a glancing blow off of his shoulder of ice and his shoulder just, it was out for the rest of the day. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning.